Right now, we're in the season called Passover. Passover is a time where the Israelites come together in their houses and celebrate the passing over of the angel of death from their homes. The first Passover took place in Egypt, and what happened in that first Passover, they killed a lamb, and they put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. And the angel of death passed them by because they were covered by the blood of the Lamb. It's the same as we as Christians should be covered by today, the blood of Jesus. He was the Lamb that was sacrificed and took our punishment, was beaten and bloodied for our sins. He who knew no sin became our sin and died on the cross as, our, as a sacrifice. The first Passover took place in Egypt. We're going to read today in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, about that first Passover. Exodus chapter 12. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, so that they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs, and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning, you shall burn it with fire. Thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, so you shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover." You notice the last part of the verse here in verse 11. It says, You shall eat with the belt on your waist and the sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. Why? Because this night was the last night in bondage. And once they ate of that meal, they were to get ready and leave this land that had held them and put them in bondage for 400 years. They were to leave it without haste, never looking back. Leave, not turning back. Do not go back to Egypt. It's over, and I'm setting you free this night. The bitter herbs that they ate, as well with the lamb, is also a symbol of the hard bitterness that they had endured in Egypt. The suffering from the taskmaster's whip. It's unimaginable to think because it was 400 years. 400 years. There was generations upon generations that did not know what the taste of freedom was until God sent Moses. Verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, 
and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plagues shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. You know, in Egypt, they had so many gods that they looked up to in their wealth, their economy, and the things in which they believed in. But all these things were meaningless because God said, I will strike down each representation of your so-called gods. You believe in the Nile River? Well, I'm going to send blood on it. You believe... And some of these Egyptians believe and worshipped things as frogs and flies and crocodiles and all sorts of strange animals that had no business being worshipped. But I will send plagues throughout all the land... You believe in these gods? Here they are, coming to devour your land. I am the Lord. None of these other gods, I alone, you worship. And he was not only teaching Israel this, but he was showing this to the Egyptians as well. Verse 14, So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No matter of work shall be done on them, but that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this day I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt." Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations an everlasting ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the morning, twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses. Since whoever eats what is leaven, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he is a stranger or a native of the land, you shall eat nothing leaven. In all your dwellings you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders and said to them, Pick out and take your lambs for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts which the blood with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. It's interesting in this time and age we're going through right now. In this word it says, stay in your house, don't go out from your house until the morning. Stay in, be protected by the blood of the Lamb. With all the things that are going on right now, they tell you to stay in your homes. Yes, stay in your homes, but always plead the blood of Jesus over your house, over your temple. Be protected by the blood. Verse 24. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and for your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. 
And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. So the people bowed their heads and worship. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of of the captive who is in his dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he, all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Verse 31, Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise, Go out from among my people, both of you, and the children of Israel. And go serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks and take your herds as you have said, and be gone and bless me also." And the Egyptians urged all the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leaven, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. I want you to think about it for a minute. The Pharaoh of Egypt leader of all the land, told Moses, get out of here. Take our stuff and go. Go and get out of here. We don't want anything to do with you. Go worship God. You have done enough to us in this land. They saw that God was God and God was the God not only of the children of Israel, but the God of everyone. Now they didn't they didn't want to believe in God, but they told Israel, take all that we have and go and worship him. Take our wealth Of all the years that they had been laboring for the Egyptians, they were never paid for what they did. Now, in a turn of events, after all these years, they said, take our wealth. Egypt was a powerful nation back in this time period. The most powerful nation on earth. They were wealthy beyond measure. They had everything. And yet they gave it to the children of Israel and said, Go, get out of here. Verse 37. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, and flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock, And they baked unleavened cakes of dough which they had brought out of Egypt. For it was not leaven, because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor they had prepared provisions for themselves. That's how much of a hurry they were in. Go, leave, run. 
be gone. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, on that very same day, it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night of solemn observance to the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, a solemn observance for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat it, but every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then he may eat it. A sojourner and a hired servant shall not eat of it. In one house it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house, nor shall you break one of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native of the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. One law shall be for the native born, for the stranger who dwells among you. Thus all the children of Israel did. And the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass on that very same day that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, according to to their armies. This is the story of Passover. This is the story of also Christ shedding his blood, dying on the cross as our sacrifice for our sins. We were the ones in sin and shame. We had took the burden of all that was wrong in the world after Adam had sinned and disobeyed God. But when Christ came to earth, he took upon himself that burden, that sin, and laid down his life willingly for us. He was the sacrifice. Now, in remembrance of Passover, it's a tale of two stories, one of Israel's freedom and also the story of our freedom. Let's not forget where we were before we were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We were slaves unto sin. We were not free. We were bound in our iniquities. But when Christ came and shed his blood and rose again on the third day, we became sons and daughters in freedom if we only accept it. Now you can live and sin all you want, but you're not going to heaven for it. Freedom is at a price. The price is what Jesus paid for you and I. You can say, I, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. I can do anything. But are you really free? I want you to think about it. Are you really happy in where you're at? Are you happy in Egypt? Because even after this Passover, and when they were in the desert, when you go through hard times as a Christian, and you go into the desert wandering around, many of the Israelites wanted to go back to Egypt. At least I could eat. 
But did you forget what you were in? They made bricks out of mud and straw. They were in the muck and mire and clay. They were filthy. Filthy. That's what Egypt was. Yeah, you ate. But you were filthy. And that's how it is in the world as Christians, for us who want to go back to Egypt, but they forget as saints the filth that was all involved in the land of Egypt. I want to be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb because then we are Pure and as white as snow, just as he is. Because when we are redeemed in Christ, the old us is dead. The filthy rags that we once wore are gone. And garments, white garments, are we clothed in. Passover is a story of two things, of Israel and of us. The church and Israel complement each other. Christ is the bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And Passover should be remembered with reverence. So thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood on the cross for you and I and redeeming us from all the filth of this world and clothing us in beautiful garments, white robes, pure and holy as you are holy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.